Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, as ever, I will be reading you a short story. Um, this one's a little bit longer than a thousand words, but it's based on, as ever, five random words which have been thrown up by an online text generator um, without me having the power to veto any of them. So uh, the words chosen for today's story are And the story is number 80, and it's called Allies in the Deep. Enfolded in blankets on the top shelf of the walk-in wardrobe, Cathy heard the sound of her family being eviscerated. The horrific memory replayed itself over and over in her mind. She shook and wept and forced her fingers into her ears and rocked herself into a kind of numb stupor until the screaming stopped. When she unplugged her ears some hours later, having not been discovered, even though the metallic tentacles did penetrate the wardrobe and tear up the clothes beneath her perch, all was silence. She'd been holding onto her pee for hours now, not wanting the liquid to run out of the wardrobe and give her presence away. Now she ran to the adjoining bathroom and voided her bladder. The physical relief engendered a feeling of shame and guilt. Terrified, Cathy crept barefoot to the cabin door and eased it open an inch. Nothing moved but the gangway was awash with blood, and a pair of lifeless legs protruded from the next door berth. When, several hours before, the sycamore seed-like shape descended from the whirl of clouds above the main deck, the crew's guests had gathered in shock silence to watch an alien ship land on the helipad. Cathy, just three days shy of her thirteenth birthday, had done what her father had sternly demanded and raced back to the cabin to hide. She'd paused halfway to turn and look back, something she would eternally regret. A horde of spider-like aliens descended from their ship, surrounded the assembled guests and crew and began blasting them apart with dark red lasers. Cathy, emerging from behind a bulkhead, sprinted barefoot for the lower decks. It seemed likely that in the hours she'd been hiding, the creatures from another world had scuttled on their many legs around the ship's cabins and dragged every last human from their quarters. As she peeked out into the gangway, Cathy could hear a shrieking sound that resembled a circular saw struggling to cut sheet metal. In fact, there were several different tonalities. Voices. Somehow, these sounds constituted an alien language. Cathy shrank away from the gap in the door as three or four of the invaders scuttled by, dragging heavy bags of something across the bloody floor. Sneaking back to the door, Cathy caught a glimpse of what was inside the semi-translucent fabric of the sacking, the glistening, squirmy shapes of human organs. Cathy felt her bile rise. She gulped the nausea down and began to formulate a plan. Her unusual mind shut off the horrific certainty that her family was dead. Father Carl, Mother Solvig, and Brother Martin, all gone. Cathy had only two choices. Continue to hide and hope the aliens would leave without finding her or emerge from the cabin in an attempt to escape. Given the freezing temperatures of the Norwegian Sea, escape would not normally be an option. Sure, she could try to release a lifeboat, but the chances of doing so without being caught seemed slim. However, since Cathy's parents were keen scuba divers and had enrolled their kids in the sport, there was another possibility open to her. Cathy pulled her small suitcase from under the bed, glad to discover the aliens had not ripped it apart. Inside was her folded wetsuit and flippers. She quickly pulled on the suit and folded her matted hair into a ponytail. Cathy was a strong swimmer, but the aliens had descended from the storm clouds when the ship was halfway between Alisund and Molde. Land was probably 500 metres distant, either the mainland on the port side or Australia to the starboard. Could she make it? The wetsuit was a mid-weight one, suitable for cold seas, but not for the deep channels the cruise ships travelled. It didn't matter. What choice did she have? The family had planned to rent oxygen cylinders from the result at Molde, However, Cathy had packed a tiny 500ml tank she could strap across her chest. It would give her perhaps 45 minutes to swim under the waves, and she could use her flippers and maybe even move faster. Having seen the lethal power of the alien's devices, she couldn't risk swimming on the surface. Cathy tested the airflow, and a reassuring hiss came from the mouthpiece. She put on her goggles and double-checked everything. Then she flopped as quietly as the flippers would allow to the door and listened. She could hear nothing but the lapping of the waves, the wind, and the occasional squawk of seagulls. Taking deep breaths, Cathy opened the door, trotted to one of the lifeboats, and clambered over the handrail, letting herself down the ladder built into the ship's hull. 
She descended past the lifeboats to a few feet above the frothing grey-blue waves. The sky was ominously dark, and Cathy knew she had half an hour at best before sun went down. Taking one final breath of fresh air, Cathy jumped off the ladder and dropped feet first into the waves, as above her a cacophony of shrieks sounded. As she plunged under the surface, hot blasts of lasers cut through the water, creating columns of bubbles around her. Cathy kicked out and dolphined her way down into the dark water. Soon she could feel the pressure building up, but the red glow of the lasers couldn't reach her here. As she was struggling to get her bearings, a dark form to Cathy's left emerged from the murk, something huge and silent. Another ship? No, something more remarkable. A tail fin sliced the water, and a barnacled behemoth hove into view, a mink whale. It seemed to be swimming directly towards the ship. Cathy kicked out in perpendicular direction, as behind her a massive dull clang suggested the whale had hit the vessel. Several other impacts followed, and Cathy could feel currents from the rocking liner rippling along her body. After 40 minutes of swimming, Cathy's legs were aching with a fiery pain, and she was taking ever deeper gulps to power her onwards. She had no idea if she were swimming in the right direction, and her oxygen wouldn't last for more than a few minutes. Before long, she reluctantly stopped using her legs, forced off the flippers, and began to swim breaststroke through the water. Her arms were far weaker than her legs and quickly lost their strength. Should she rise to the surface? The dark shadow appeared once more. This time the cetacean was beneath her. Cathy felt a welling up of panic as the oxygen ran out, and she gasped convulsively, swallowing brine. Simultaneously, the huge whale rose, and she felt its bulk under her as it lifted her and breached the surface. Somewhere beyond her, a blowhole blasted a jet of water into the air, and Cathy rolled onto her side, astonished to realise she was lying on the back of the whale as it swam slowly around a jutting promontory of rocky cliffs. She sat up, amazed and thrilled, then realised with a strange mixture of joy and pain that the liner was listing to one side, a pod of whales buffeting and attacking it whilst lasers cut into them. The animals were indomitable, redoubling their efforts despite the blood darkening the waves around them. With a grinding sound of tortured metal, the liner began to list, taking on water. Moments later, the lasers cut out and the ship slowly toppled fully over. A faint shrieking of many alien voices could be heard as the cliffs of the islet obscured Cathy's view. She turned and saw a crescent of sand. Behind it lay grassy fields and a cluster of stone houses. Arrayed on the shore was a small group of people, waving and shouting. The whale suddenly descended, leaving Cathy floundering in the dark waves as a rowboat made its way out towards her. Cathy Svensson caught one final glimpse of her saviour's tail fin clapping the water into spray before it sank out of sight, a dark silhouette in the despairing depths. So, I hope you like that little mildly barking mad sci-fi extravaganza. Bit of a big budget number there. Um, yeah, odd combination of words kind of inspired that. And uh, it's fun to write and kind of cinematic. Perhaps there's something in that for a future movie script or who knows, who knows. Anyway, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that and uh, I will see you again, possibly with a more down-to-earth story very soon. Bye.